Judge, we would uh, oppose the granting of a bond uh, awaiting sentencing for the defendant in this case. Uh, the biggest difference that uh, the defendant has between when this trial started and now is he is now a convicted felon. He is a convicted felon of aggravated assault. He is a convicted felon of violent, violation of oath by public officer twice and violation of uh, uh, found guilty of making a false statement. Um, this jury has found that he was responsible for the death uh, by finding him guilty of the crimes that led to Mr. Hill's death. And not only that, but more importantly, lied about it. Um, he lied to cover up what he had done. We believe that this defendant would be a flight risk if allowed to be out on bond. He is now a convicted felon and is facing upwards of 35 years in prison. That is a very big difference than when he walked into this courtroom. And given the fact that the family has been waiting a very long time for justice in this case, to have to wait longer for justice in this case in the state's position does not seem appropriate. And we believe that this individual should be treated, as I said before, as every other defendant who comes into this courthouse, and that when a person is found guilty of aggravated assault and the related crimes as charged in this indictment uh, that led to the death of Anthony Hill, who was doing absolutely nothing wrong on that day, was committing no crime. Uh, because let's remember, while they didn't find him guilty of felony murder, they found him responsible for shooting a gun that led to Anthony Hill's death. And justification was an absolute defense to the aggravated assault, and they still found him guilty of it. Uh, we believe that he is a flight risk if allowed to be out. Um, you know, it, unfortunately, we live in a day and age, Your Honor, where it is not uncommon for folks to be found guilty, to be given the benefit of the doubt, to be out awaiting their turn to be sentenced, and then bad things happen. And the state does not, I repeat, does not want to be responsible for anything like that happening. This defendant must be held accountable, and his accountability begins today, the day this jury found him guilty. And so respectfully, Your Honor, we would request that you deny any bond and that you put handcuffs on this convicted felon and take him into custody because that's where he belongs. You want me to put the handcuffs on him? I want you to order the deputies to do okay. it, Judge. That was a metaphor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Samuel or Mr. Carcon? Uh, that was a great oration by the assistant DA. Um, the fact of the matter is the penal bond in Georgia uh, is regularly granted in all kinds of crimes other than murder. The jury found him not guilty unanimously to counts of murder. Uh, he is not a flight risk. That's completely fantasy on the part of the assistant DA. He's appeared for all court appearances, not only during trial, but during the past two years since he was indicted. He's never missed Day. He's never missed an appointment in our office or any other obligation that he's had. And there's no clear and convincing evidence whatsoever that he poses a risk of flight or danger to the community or danger to any witnesses or danger to obstruct justice. Uh, and for the DA to make a speech here like he's giving a closing argument to the jury is offensive. And that the court should stand by its uh, initial uh, decision that he should be allowed to remain free. <coughs> the fact of the matter that it took years to get this case to trial it was the DA's fault. It was the DA's fault for this case took three years to get to trial, not the defendant's fault. We have caused no delays whatsoever. It took, them a, year. It took a year or two for them to uh, get the case to um, get to the, to the grand jury in this case. Uh, there were procedures that were reviewed by the Georgia Supreme Court in the interim, but there's been no delay caused by the defendant himself or any Bond is appropriate, not only prior sentencing, but I'll just let you know now that we'll be asking for bond pending appeal as well under the standards of the Georgia Code and not by the um, rhetoric of the assistant DA who's trying to please the, the, the public here. Um, so we would ask you to uh, stand by your decision to allow him to remain free on bond. We'd ask if you don't have a problem with the ankle monitor or home confinement uh, and ask you to uh, set sentencing
Your Honor, the only response I have is that the defense, Mr. Sandler, was factually incorrect. <laughs> I mean, the fact that the defense requested certain appeals is what delayed the main delay in this case. It was over a year that we waited. So to say that it's the state's fault is just blatantly and factually incorrect. And I, I, I don't understand why he would say something that he knows is untrue. I assume both of those were, the, were for the purposes of the record and not for me as I, I know the procedural history yes. of the, the case and the fortitude that is afforded by law, which includes appeals. Um, looking at the Ayala factors, understanding that Mr. Olson um, has been convicted by this jury of aggravated assault, violation of oath of office, by public, violation of oath by public officer, two counts and making a false statement, um, and not of the murder. I am gonna stand by my decision. I am not saying that um, Anthony Hill's death is in vain. I am not saying that Anthony Hill's um, death did not occur, but he was not found guilty of that. And in looking at what I do um, with appropriate cases that come before me, um, if this was a case of just aggravated assault, it would be in the same position. Um, if it was a murder, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation if he was convicted of the murder. Um, I am going to, as it pertains to count three, um, on the aggravated assault, understanding that the defense is asking for an appeal bond, but I am going to allow him to remain on his bond. Um, he will have to have an ankle monitor. He will have a curfew of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, that will happen, and he will have to report with pretrial services as directed. Um, we will be back here on the 1st of October, or excuse me, the 1st of November at 10 a.m. And what I will say, Mr. Olson, is um, that doesn't mean that you will um, not go into custody. I don't know. I have to listen to all the um, arguments and any witnesses that are given during sentencing, um, but it is likely or not that you may go into custody. And so you need to understand that um, in that, I don't want it to be inferred in any kind of way that the position that I have taken today means that there is no jail time and that there's no prison time because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you have not been convicted of murder and I think that this is an appropriate um, recourse at this time.